My name is June Arima Schumann. I'm a Japanese American. Um, I am involved in APANO as a board member and uh, past board co-chair for APANO. Asian Pacific American um, uh, community in Portland metro area is a fast growing community made up of 30 to 35 different ethnic groups, uh, 75 to 90 different language groups, um, a combination of native born, American born, uh, Asian and Pacific Islander, and foreign born uh, people coming from all over the globe. Uh, and so it's an extremely diverse, a multifaceted community. Census um, data is a aggregate data, and so the details of who is part of the Asian community and who is part of the uh, Pacific Islander community isn't captured. And so, for example, among Asian American communities, there are a dozen or more different ethnic communities within it. Um, and uh, same thing with the Pacific Islander communities. Uh, beyond that, uh, the census also doesn't tell you whether uh, uh, a respondent is a recent arrival or fourth, fifth, or seventh generation in America. So all of that on, all that information that's not available in the census hides things like what is the language capacity of a household or uh, the educational attainment of a household that may be related to their status as a recent immigrant uh, family or a fifth or sixth or seventh generation family. And so lots of, some of the key social economic issues are hidden from anyone who's looking at the census. What most people, both public and private sec sector people, rely on is um, a stereotype of Asian and Pacific Islander. Because we hear and read about people with high educational attainment and professional uh, and economic achievements, uh, that most Asian and Pacific Islander must be doing all right. And that assumption from a stereotype of, of sample of a smaller number of people is applied to a, 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 as a, a broad swath over all of the Asian Pacific Islander communities. And that damages the effort of each household and or organizations like APANO and uh, public um, agencies, uh, public officials who are elected officials or people who work in public agencies don't have an accurate picture of who the Asian and Pacific Islanders are. I think um, the data we see in publications and other media are, um, again, ag uh, rely on, on aggregated information. And so, um, and the second thing is um, the analysis is based on um, what I would call the uh, majority culture based. That means that um, unique um, uh, capacities or unique skills or unique achievements that are culture based in Asian and Pacific Islander cultures aren't noticed. Um, and so the, the public is largely unaware of important historical events that affected Asian and Pacific Islanders or events that have negative impact on certain segments of the Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Um, and so in that sense, it's harder for the Asian and Pacific Islander communities to to speak up uh, and find sympathetic ears. 
Asian and Pacific Islander communities graduation rate from high school, even though it is slightly above average, what we want to highlight is that the average graduation rate in our community, in Portland metro area is very low, 64%, 65%. And so if we're slightly above that average, we're not doing so good, uh, no matter what uh, uh, measure you used. We ought to be achieving 99.9% .9 graduation rate, no matter what your ethnic background is. And so uh, what you see, if you just look at the data, is uh, Asian and Pacific Islanders aren't doing that much better. If you look at a very specific detailed data on uh, graduation rates among Asian and Pacific Islanders, some groups are doing very poorly, worse than uh, similarly bad as some of the other uh, uh, communities. The, wow. I mentioned earlier that there is a significant part of our, the Asian and Pacific Islander community that is a new immigrant group. Uh, also, a um, sin significant number of refugees are Asian and Pacific Islander. Um, these people have very little um, uh, financial uh, resources to work with. The federal government's refugee allowance is um, very limited in terms of duration. And so the impact of the, the uh, hardship that these people are experiencing is that um, they're, they're living in very small substandard housing because of the, they just can't afford anything uh, large or sufficient for their particular family size. Or some families double up in order to uh, make their dollars stretch a little bit. So housing itself is not the issue, the income is the issue. Um, and there aren't enough affordable housing in the appropriate configuration for the family sizes uh, and location. Uh, well, because of the um, educational, um, uh, well, let me start over. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the issue of graduation rate from high school and uh, that Asian, Asian and Pacific Islanders aren't doing that much better than the rest of the students. And we find that Asian and Pacific Islanders are not doing well in completing um, uh, higher education. They enter, but they don't graduate uh, at, the, at, the, at the rate that we would expect. That means that there are fewer people in our community who are prepared to enter professional fields. Uh, with appropriate credentials. And so that results in um, professional attainment that is not at par with um, individual cap capabilities. Healthcare is a huge problem in that everybody needs healthcare. Uh, so it's a universal need, but access to health is not easy on a universal basis. Uh, language and cultural nuances of expectations of both the healthcare provider and the patient population um, uh, is fraught with um, gaps. Um, and so even if healthcare were available, access to that healthcare is difficult for people who are not used to the Western uh, system of healthcare or don't have adequate language. And healthcare systems don't have the language skills with, built into their uh, healthcare delivery. And so the responsibility for translation is largely left to the patient and their families. And that's really not uh, uh, appropriate or adequate to provide uh, sufficient healthcare. Um, well, a simple one would be, um, the Western method of healthcare um, re, uh, delivery de relies on patient's, uh, patients' ability to self-advocate, for the patients to raise the questions, patients to ask for more information. 
in some cultures that just isn't done. Uh, patients rely on the healthcare professional to initiate the information giving and uh, advice giving and recommendations. And um, a, a, a even simpler would be some patients would not raise a question unless invited to. Uh, and so if the doctor or the nurse or other healthcare providers don't know how to do that invitation and open the door for the conversation, um, the, the assumption often is that if the patient doesn't have any questions, then the, the patient must have it all figured out. Okay. For, it's a problem for foreign-born uh, uh, populations among the Asian and Pacific Islander communities. If you don't know the language and you don't know how to get instructions on how to navigate the transportation system or how to navigate your social service agency or how to apply for food stamps. Um, it's similar to the healthcare system. Um, American system of social services is, is, depends on individual initiative and individual uh, uh, ability to self-advocate. Um, so, so there are no community leaders. Uh, if there's no community leader or um, outreach component to a social service agency, um, it's mainly relying on individual to figure it out. Uh, if you're a newcomer, uh, we used to have things like welcome, uh, uh, what do you call that, a welcome basket or something like that? Well, we don't do that kind of thing. There's no neighborly welcoming to a new city or new block to say, this is where you go for your police uh, service or medical service. And, and so when you move to a new city anymore, you know, uh, we're all on our own. So uh, most of us sort of muddle through and figure it out. But if you're a newcomer without the benefit of language skills or cultural knowledge about how American cities work, there's an added burden on how to figure it out. I think um, as a region, uh, we're just barely becoming aware that there are people who are different from each other. Um, Oregon is, um, uh, up until very recently, a very white middle class state. Uh, and our metropolitan area was no different than that. And so we, as a community, uh, the whole region has to uh, understand that among our residents are people with wide range of life experiences and expectations and abilities or lack of abilities to navigate in English or cultural norms that are not the same as the middle America cultural norms. And, and that's really what all of the diversity training should really be about. The responsibility is on everybody to be able to manage people who are not the same as us or people who speak languages that are different than English. Uh, we need to be more bilingual, uh, not just that foreign born people should be bilingual, but all of us Native American born people should be bilingual in several languages in order to accommodate the growing diversity in our community.